Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. We're here to talk about November's movies. We saw like 14 movies or something like that. I saw a lot of movies you guys and I know a couple months ago I said that I was gonna be cooling it on the new release movies and then here we are month of November and I pretty much reviewed everything that we're gonna be talking about. So as always anything that I did review within that month whether it's like solo reviews or with my family you know the after the theater reviews those will be down in the description box down below now if you're new again welcome to the channel we do movie reviews here mostly new releases but i am trying to do more of the retro reviews we do these monthly tier lists random ranking videos and then a couple like series reviews here and there if any of that sounds interesting to you consider hitting that subscribe button i'm on the road to 400 subscribers and i'm very close you guys i am pretty darn close so i would truly uh, appreciate your support so i do have a bunch of movies to talk about we're gonna go ahead and get on with this video now starting off is going to be bruise this is a netflix movie it not only stars halle berry but she actually directed this movie as well this is about a mma fighter female mma fighter halle berry who was like basically at the peak of her career and there was this fight that she was put into that she wasn't quite ready she wasn't ready emotionally physically just you know we do end up finding out towards the end of the movie why she did what she did but basically she has like this very embarrassing moment it's a typical kind of like sporty movie it wasn't terrible it wasn't bad it was it was okay you guys it's more of a emotional journey the directing i believe this was her directorial debut the directing was was okay it is more on the like here type of deal even though it is a sports movie and i do enjoy sport uh, sports movies because you know you of course have that peak of their career and then we had that downfall and then like you know they're working on it and then we had like that great awesome fight or beam or whatever it is depending on the sport that we're talking about but once we did get to that big moment uh i wasn't like fully like invested in there and not even though i wasn't a fan of helen Berry's directing skills i did enjoy her performance and i feel like that has a lot to do because she was the director so she knew exactly what she wanted from this character so she was able to deliver it we do have physical abuse here physical mental abuse here so just kind of take that in count trigger warning if any of that um could affect you in any type of way you may want to stay away from it there is um a little boy here he doesn't even talk at all literally until like the very end of the movie just like two three words that he says and i really enjoyed his performance he said a lot with just his facial expressions and everything uh, but yeah at the end it was just okay and i lingered way too much because i didn't review this one you guys uh up next is another netflix movie red notice this is the star uh Dwayne Johnson Ryan Reynolds and Gal Gadot and I do have a review on this one so I'm not gonna linger too too much on it uh this one was um I guess it was an enjoyable movie at the end of the day it pretty much is what you expect it to be with Ryan Reynolds with Dwayne Johnson uh Gal Gadot I wish we had more of her in the movie, but I feel like she had a lot of fun playing this role. Dwayne and Ryan, honestly, in this movie, there's nothing, they're not bringing anything new. It's the same freaking character that you see them all the time. And now, moving on to the last Netflix movie. No, no, we have another Netflix, but that's like when we get to the Christmas stuff there at the end. Um, so this little section of Netflix, uh, Tick, Tick, Boom, which could be an Oscar contender, possibly for Andrew Garfield. I'm not quite sure. Could be, you know, I feel like he's in the talks of it. The the movie as well possibly this is based on a true story and it's basically a movie about a play about Jonathan Larson about the time of his life when he was trying to write this particular uh, musical this particular play the songs they're pretty fun they're not like super super enjoyable super super memorable uh, there is one particular one that I do enjoy with him and uh, Vanessa Hudgens because Vanessa Hudgens is also in this movie I think it's the therapy song I think that's what it's going because I like how like they be looking all cute mm -hmm. now this was Lin-Manuel Miranda's um, directorial debut again just kind of like Halle Berry he did a pretty decent job with it wasn't great wasn't the most you know like oh my god uh movie but he did really well and he actually well Lin-Manuel Miranda actually partaked in the actual on stage 
play. So this is very, very dear to his heart. Of course, we know that Lynn Manuel Miranda is all about the theater. So you could tell the passion and the love that he has uh, for this particular movie. This will not be the last time that we hear Lynn Manuel Miranda's name uh, in this video. Not one of my favorite musicals, but I had a good time with it. So it was um, an enjoyable um, movie. All right, off to theatrical releases, and this is. Spencer. Now this is another Oscar contender. Well, not the movie. I don't think the movie will be Oscar contender, but Kristen Stewart could very well not only be nominated, but maybe win or, you know, like very toe in toe with somebody else up there possibly taking home that Oscar uh, portraying Princess Diana. This is taking place within like a three day um, Christmas weekend around the time that she was planning on leaving. Uh, Charles, right? Is that his name? All the emotions and the depression and the anorexia or bulimia, whatever it is um, that she was going through. Now I am within that age group that remembers Princess Diana, even though I was little, but she's a freaking princess. The costume design is spectacular, you guys. The score was actually really nice as well. Unfortunately, you guys, the movie is very dull. It is beautiful, you guys. It's a beautiful, beautiful movie love the story but it is like here and there's nothing really uh ugh. so because of that i'm just gonna kind of stick it uh, uh i don't even know where to put it you know i'm gonna just say it was enjoyable if it wasn't because of how dull it was i would have put it under good but you know what let me move it over here i'm gonna put it at the top of enjoyable because we're not gonna have red notice up there at the top all right you guys up next would be marvel's eternals this is the marvel movie that's kind of like splitting up all the fans splitting everything up people are, are just not ready for this movie it's the next stage you know within the marvel universe people just don't really want to grow with them they want the same explosions the same fun that we've been getting with marvel but i feel like every phase that we've had with them it's been different like even when it first started you know it was different from phase two from phase three and then now we're in phase four and i feel like you should want to grow with them because this does feel more grown up so if you did grow up with the marvel universe i feel like you should be in a point in your life where you should appreciate this particular film i love that this movie doesn't make these superheroes invincible mind you they are eternal right they've been along for like ages yet they managed to die and the Avengers it took them up until Endgame before any of the damn superheroes died you know you never really feared for their life because they always managed to you know walk away yeah they have scratches and bruises or whatever but never really fear for them. Now, I personally love the movie. I'm going to say it was a, a good movie. Um, I fall within the positive side of this particular one. A lot of people just are not fans of it, just are totally bringing it down. This is not what they were waiting for. Next would be Keen Richard. Uh, now, this one is um, available for, I think, like another two, three weeks on HBO Max. Uh, this is one of those HBO Max theatrical releases. Now, this is about the father, you guys. The father, not Venus and Serena, but the father. Now, of course, Venus and Serena Williams are the sister tennis players. One of the most well-known, possibly one of the better, best players out there. I don't follow tennis, so I cannot really say that. Uh, but it's, it's about the father of what he did to get his daughters to where they're at now. Now, this is another Oscar contender in the best actor category and from what i've been hearing is that will smith could be taking home that oscar the movie was really good i was totally fine watching it at home i don't think it needed the theatrical experience let's move on to ghostbusters after a life so this is the fourth installment within the ghostbusters universe or the third one for a lot of people because a lot of people don't want to accept or acknowledge 2016's version the one with the female cast now like i said in the review i enjoyed that movie i really like that movie but people you know don't like it whatever i enjoyed it so this is a fourth installment for me 
but if it's a third one for you that's fine this is a total total love letter to part one um so if you are gonna watch this movie if you haven't seen the original ghostbusters i would highly recommend to at least check out the first part we of course have that beautiful send off and goodbye and it's very respectful uh for harold because unfortunately he did pass away in real life but i like the way that he was incorporated within this one and again that very really nice um heartfelt uh goodbye i didn't get emotional with it because i'm not like a huge ghostbusters fan my older sister she did get emotional with that particular one uh one of my friends was like a major major ghostbusters fan and he was like bawling crying um, i know some people really weren't really here for it again i was here for it um i think it's a really really good movie you know what actually i'm gonna say it's awesome no it was good we're gonna put it like at the beginning of good okay <laughs> um i love the way that it looks i love the performances um mackenzie grace oh i just adore her and she did so great in this movie she pretty much is the one that carries the movie i believe but like i said it's really a love letter to the first part on to house of gucci which was one of my anticipated movies of, of the year this is another one that is based on a true story has a wonderful cast with lady gaga adam driver uh rob not robert de niro <laughs> Al Pacino and Jared Leto. I was totally looking forward to uh, this movie. I do love based on true story films. The trailers totally sold me. I love Adam Driver. Then we went, we saw this movie, and it let me down so much. Oh my god, those you guys. This movie, it tried and it disappointed me in like all the ways. It is really long. It is so really dull for it to be house of gucci you guys there is like no real fashion going on as far as them doing fashion things but if this is how basically this gucci family lost the business because the funny thing is that nobody in the gucci family like actual gucci family owns this business anymore they have lost it the mind you Maurizio wasn't even really into the fashion world he wanted to be a lawyer and then he kind of got in there um basically pushed by lady gaga's um character i don't know we're just gonna say lady gaga the wife italian family with freaking like russian accents you guys lady gaga's accent was i don't know lady gaga jared leto i don't even know like they were on a whole other level in this movie compared to everybody else but we're moving on to belfast you guys it's just kind of like a semi autobiography we're in the 1960s in southern ireland um the movie is in black and white it looks absolutely beautiful this is another oscar contender this is the one that's in the talks of being the winner for best picture uh jamie dorian is also kind of in the talks of being nominated for um lead actor but not one that's supposed to win that's supposed to go to um will smith a uh, person people say can you really see jamie winning <laughs> i don't know i feel like that's a trope to 50 shades judy uh dench also has um part here it has like a bit of humor here and there uh one of them is when they're coming for the ranch <laughs> and they're like trying to hide and they're coming knocking and buddies like trying to go in and answer the door and the mom like grabs them it's like Shh. like we're trying to hide from <laughs> from the landlord and then the other one is also when i don't know i think it was like the, the cousin or somebody who took them so they can go um loiter and he like grabs this like detergent or whatever it was that he's like running in the mom as the, everybody is going and they're stealing stuff like it's like you put this back we don't do this it was so funny you guys um the movie was really good you guys it does have a, a few like little dull moments but it was actually a really, really great movie. But moving on to Disney's Encanto. Um, now, this movie will be available on Disney Plus on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. I can't remember exactly, you guys, but it's going to be available one of those two days. Not the 90 days like I had said originally in my review. I didn't have all the facts at that particular time. But normally, it's 90 days in the theater and then it'll be available on Disney Plus. Also, you guys, this is Disney's 60th movie. And I just love, love, love the look of it, the tone of it. The music was really, really beautiful. I love the representation of the Latino community. Now, this is based in the, like, mountains, 
forest. I don't know. We're in Colombia. And this is the other movie, you guys, that I was talking about, Lynn manuel Miranda. Lynn manuel Miranda does do the music here. This is the one, if you haven't guessed, my favorite of the year. It's gonna be up there. It's, it, I loved it, you guys. It's absolutely beautiful. It is a wonderful, wonderful movie. It's about magic. It's about family. I feel like I'm about to give you guys way more than I need to be giving you, so let me shut it. It's an amazing movie. Check it out. I would recommend seeing this in theaters, you guys, because you have to like experience all in theater. Uh, but if you can't, if it's not open, you don't feel comfortable, totally understand. But look out for it. Disney Plus, I think it's actually on Christmas Day that's gonna come out. So it's a great movie to watch. Now, um, talking about Christmas, it is time to talk about the Christmas movies that we saw this month. Uh, first up would be Home Sweet Home Alone, which is the like fifth or sixth installment within the Home Alone world yes you guys yes there are more than three home alone movies <laughs> i did not know that some of you are probably like wait wait there's more than two because you just know those first two no no you guys there's a third one and i knew about that one but there's these other two that i had no idea about so i think this is the sixth one it's on disney plus now this one does kind of give you that love that nostalgia to the first two in the sense that we have um what's his name buzz <laughs> we have adult buzz he's a cop here so in case you're not familiar that is kevin's older brother so this one is i don't know you guys it's a mess um we're gonna it, it's not a good movie you guys it, it's, a, it's a bad movie <laughs> as you would probably think for it being a sixth installment archie gates is the little boy that basically gets left behind here now i loved him from jojo rabbit ellie kemper also comes on the movie she's not the boy's mom she's technically like the villain but there's really no villain here it's about this couple that's trying to get back this toy that Archie's character has taken. I don't even know how to talk about this, but you don't you feel bad for the the couple that's like technically breaking in, but they're not really breaking in, but they're break, breaking in because they do have the key and they have the code to go into the house because he overheard them. Because of course, the madness of trying to get everybody into the truck because there's always that madness, you know, like oh my god. But this time it's not the shuttles, it's Uber. It's a mess. We're not gonna talk about it too much. I really wouldn't recommend this uh, Christmas movie to you. Just watch Home Alone. Can't go wrong with Home Alone. Up next would be um, Princess Switch, Romancing the Stars, Princess Switch Three. Uh, this is another Netflix movie. This is the last one. That I, oh no, we have another Netflix movie over here. I keep thinking, there's so many Netflix movies, you guys. We are focused more on Fiona's character, which is, you know, like the extra cousin. But again, if you're not really a fan of the first ones, you're not going to enjoy them. It's a, a cheesy Christmas movie, but I do feel like it's one of the better Christmas, newer cheesy movies. We're almost done, you guys. Just two movies left. Last Netflix movie, Love Hard. This one was actually pretty surprising, you guys. It was pretty surprising. Um, it was, I'm gonna put it under enjoyable. It's not that, that great, but it's, it's another one of the better Christmas movies. Um, this does start Nina, don't, I don't even know how to say her last name, you guys. Vampire Diaries. The main character from there and then uh jimmy yang also comes on this it's one of those movies about surprising somebody on christmas day without letting them know obviously it's a surprise uh, which you should never do because does it ever go right i don't know it might go right sometimes i mean that's not something i would ever do because i'm like i don't know especially something that you don't know mind you if it's somebody you know but if you don't know them so natalie is going off to try to surprise a tag who she well who she thinks is tag uh, but ultimately ends up being Josh. I enjoyed it again. Um, enjoyed it more than what I thought I was going to. Uh, we'll just say that that. Uh, but again, cheesy Christmas. I mean, all the Christmas movies at the end of the day, you guys are cheesy. That's what we love about them. Cheesy Christmas movies that you can watch with the whole family. All right, last on the list is 8-Bit Christmas. This is an HBO Max original, and this is another one that was surprising. <laughs> Honestly, it was really surprising. And it is going to surpass the enjoyable tier and sneak right up in there into God. Yes, uh, this is one of the better Christmas movies that I saw this month. Now this is about Jake, who is played by Neil Patrick Harris. He is telling the story to his daughter, who desperately wants a cell phone, and he's telling her a story about the time that he desperately wanted something so bad like more than what she's wanted a cell phone 
and that is the Nintendo. So we are in the 80s, roughly somewhere in the 80s. It has a wonderful message and it got me a little teared eye. So I think the emotional part of it is what got it up to that greater tier. I didn't feel that it was as cheesy as the other movies, but it still has that cheese factor, but in a really good way. Hence why it's in the good tier. And it's one of those, again, good, great for the whole family, especially if you are older and you have that nostalgia for the Nintendo. These are all the movies that I saw in the month of November. Uh, we had a lot of good and enjoyable movies. And of course, we have one favorite of the year. We'll see if it stays up there. Again, you can always follow me on Letterboxd if you don't really like my popcorn ratings. Um, on Letterboxd, it's star ratings so if you want to have like a little sneak peek of how my best of 21 movies are gonna go then that would be the place to check it out but i do change that list up a lot it just depends on how i'm feeling when i'm every time i add a movie you guys no joke i'm always changing it up let me know down below what did you check out the month of november did we check out any of the same things do we agree do we disagree um you know there are no wrong lists you guys everybody has their own opinion, so just kind of be friendly uh, down below. Now we only have one month left, you guys, for 2021, and I know a lot of you were expecting Christmas reviews, but unfortunately, I don't think I'm gonna get any done for you guys. I, I'm gonna try to at least do one or two retro Christmas reviews because I was trying to watch a couple movies that I've never seen before, but there's just so much stuff coming out this month. And then we have not only my December tier list, but the best of 2021. I don't really do the worst of the year videos on my channel. I usually do those on Instagram. I'll go live. So if you don't already follow me on Instagram, check me out there so you can check out that particular video. So just be prepared, you guys, for December because there's a lot of things coming your way. Okay, you guys, before I do close this off, of course, if you haven't already, give this video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time I post something new. And until next time, I'll see you guys at concessions. Bye.